Hey, it's Kevin DeWitch here and welcome to the Past His Prime YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel and you're interested in relaxed, casual gaming for an older generation, then please subscribe to my channel. Like the video and click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. All right, welcome back to Jurassic World, the game. In this video, we're just getting back to some basics and I just want to run through a few things. So if you're brand new to the game, this is based on what I've learned since playing it. And look, I'm not claiming to be an expert. I haven't been playing it as long as a lot of people. I'm still fairly new to it. So I guess that's why I feel I can maybe provide some information to new people and what I potentially struggled with or took a little while to pick up. And one of the ones here is about the battle system. And I'm talking about the standard battle system, okay? Later on in the game, you're going to get access to mods and things like that. And I'm not talking about that in this one. We're talking about standard battles with no mods and how the system works and what, I guess, my best approach to playing it is. And we'll see if we can do it in this one here, which is an early one, a battle stage three. And we'll see how we go with that and if we can actually explain it so as this sort of explains here we have uh, a system of type of creatures we have carnivores in the top left there that's our t-rex we have a triceratops which is our herbivore down the bottom we have our pterosaur and the bottom left, we've got amphibian. And you can see the arrows that are pointing. And what they're indicating is the direction of power, I guess. So, for instance, when I say power, obviously it depends on your level of creature and how strong it is. It can override these decisions, but there's an advantage, right? And that's what it's talking about here. The carnivore has a default advantage over a herbivore. The herbivore has an advantage over the pterosaur. Pterosaur has an advantage over the amphibian. And the amphibian has an advantage over the carnivore. So it tries to level the playing system out so that you're not just going, oh, I'm going to obviously go with carnivores all the time because they're so strong. Because if you go with carnivores all the time, then somebody just comes in with amphibians and they can be stronger all right so it's not real to the real dinosaur world this is obviously a game structure to try and get you to use all of the dinosaurs you even herbivores use them in a battle against pterosaurs now there's also a sort of a i guess a balancing equalization if you were to look on an angle because they're two away obviously if you've got a herbivore and a carnivore comes in you are really in a disadvantage. But if you're against an amphibian and a herbivore, then you're neither disadvantaged or advantaged because you're sort of two away. You're not directly there. And same goes for carnivore and pterosaur. You're sort of two away. So there can be a sort of an equal balance between them. And obviously, if you're fighting the same type, so carnivore against carnivore, again, you're in an equal playing field there. So what I would do in the case of this, okay, I am going to look at my dinosaur, my creatures. Hopefully later down the track, you're going to have a lot better options. And I would look at what the opponent is. Now, sometimes if you're doing PVPs, you won't get to see the opponents until it starts. So you're just going to have to make your best judgment call of what you want to go in with and hope that you're not going to come across stuff that's just put you all totally at a disadvantage. And I'm going to place them in the order that's going to best suit. So in the case here, his first character is an amphibian. So in my case here, I would not put a carnivore because a carnivore is weaker or is at a disadvantage to the amphibian. But a pterosaur has an advantage over the amphibian. So in this case here, I might say, I'm going to put in pterosaur first. 
Now, second, we've got a pterosaur. So, by this little wheel in the middle here, logic would say, go for a herbivore. So I can do that. Now, they give you a third. I think he's, is he going to let us put a third in? I think he will, to give us an advantage. So now I could just make a best call of what I think is going to be, as a backup, my best. Okay, so I'm thinking, in this case here, I would probably go with another pterosaur because the pterosaur is good against the amphibian and it's on equal par to the pterosaur. So I think that would give me the best approach. All right, so let's start. All right, so we obviously have to click start. We've got our best approach ready, as far as I can tell. Now, there's two positions you can be in. You can either be first to move or second to move. Most of the time, we're going to be first to move. But when you do PvP battles and stuff like that, you could be second to move. Now, the second to move player will get sort of a bonus shot. So they'll get two shots first off. To, it's, I don't know, it's sort of a way to equal it out. I never quite got it. Now, we have three options here. We have the yellow button here is reserve or save. And what that's going to do is basically save the move for the next go and it's going to add it to the our next tally just by general nature of the game okay you will so first shot you get one move second round you get two moves third round you get three moves four fourth round you'll get four moves and any round after that you will still stick to four moves all right four moves is the maximum but what you can do is if you save moves, you can get up to eight moves, which is the maximum power you could do. So you could do a maximum hit with eight moves, attacks, and that is your biggest, best move, all right? But you can do any combination of those, and you can get up to five, six. So for instance, if I was to save this now, next round, by default, I would have two, plus it would add my save, so I would have three moves available to me. And those moves can be used on any of these buttons, any combination I can put. So we've got the blue one is defense, that's block. The red one is attack, okay? So I could put those three moves on attack, I could put the three moves on block, I could put the three moves in save to get a really big addition to the next move. But I could also break it up. I could put one in attack, one in defense, one in save. I could put two in attack, one in defense, none in save. You could do any combination of that. Now what we want to look is look at the top with our character's stats. Okay, you can see our health is the top one with the plus symbol. So we only have 47 health. He has 72. The number underneath is our attack power. We have, ours is green because we picked a pterosaur which has a bonus advantage over his, the amphibian. So that's why ours is green, right? We have a greater advantage. So we have 23. So if I was to do this one move as an attack, I would hit his character by 23 points. So he would not die because he's got 72, but he would go down 23 points. He's at a disadvantage, so he only has a nine. If he was to attack us, he would only take nine points off us. Now, when you get multiple attacks, so if you get up to, say, five or something like that, you get bonus additions to that. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what the calculation is, to be honest. I can't provide that. Maybe you could find that somewhere else. But there's a percentage. There is a way to calculate it, I think. But you will get a bonus. So if you add more than one attack, you will get more than just what's represented there. You, you get a little bit of a bonus. 
Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually swap. So if you find that you are at a total, like in his case here, he's at a total disadvantage. He might decide that he's going to swap. So if you click on another dinosaur and then you click on this little double arrow thing, it'll swap your dinosaurs out. But before you go and do that, that user move, right? That is one move. So swapping is a move. So in my case here, if I was to swap, this one move I have available to me would just disappear. It would be wasted. But he might decide to move, like swap, because he's at a disadvantage. He might decide to swap to his pterosaur. And the reason he might is because, remember, I said he's going second, so he'll get a bonus shot. So he'll actually have two shots available to him. So he might use one to swap, and then he'll have one to attack. And if he changes to a pterosaur, then he's on equal playing field to us, and then it's based on his character's health and power and it might be strong enough to kill us. It all depends, because it is a level 10. That's what this other number is on its symbol. It's a level 10, I'm a level one. Sorry, there's a lot to explain in this. And there's a couple of tactics I would use here. Okay, so how would I do my first move? There's Okay, there's no exact set science to it. it. You do need to get used to the system. But what I would consider, if I could kill him with one shot straight away, a lot of the time I will take that move and I will attack. Now, of course, if I attack with one move, when the next character comes in, I'm totally defenseless. So that one could then kill me. Right, so you be, need to be prepared that you could be killed because you've got no defense. Now, if the opposite is the case, that he could kill me with one move, then I would most likely... I would probably block. Or if he could kill me with two moves, because he's going to get two shots. So if he could kill me with two moves, or even one, I'd probably block. In this case here, he's got nine attack. He can't kill me. I have to hope that if he swaps that the other character can't kill me either. It's a bit of a gamble. So I would most likely save here because I can't kill him. I want to build up my moves to get to the point where I can kill him. Now, there is some slight exceptions to that. And that exception, not the save, but the block. The exception to that might be is I might make a decision that I'm going to sacrifice this first dinosaur to build up my save. So I might say, even though he can kill me with one shot, I'm still going to go for the save because I'm going to let him kill my character because it's going to benefit my second character to have that save. And these are the strategies you need to use. It's a very, the, the battle system I'll tell you now is a, it's a bit of a counting game and you'll see that. Hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that here. Or I'll demonstrate that in my other park where I've got more complicated battles. And you'll see it's a counting game. You need to keep track and you need to pay attention. Because if you lose track of those numbers, you'll forget what's been happening. So as I said, in this case here, I'm going to go for a save. So I'm going to save my move. See how he got a bonus? So he gets two shots. And he's going to go straight for two attacks. Now that didn't kill me, as I said, because I knew it wouldn't. We now have three. And this is where you need to keep track. We knew he had two moves. He did two attacks. That meant he used all those moves, which means we know he did not save a move and he did not block because he used both moves on an attack. So he is totally defenseless right now. Right? Absolutely. He has nothing to protect him. So if I wanted to go for three hits... Those three hits are going to hit him 100%. Not one of them is going to be blocked. If he had have only done one attack, then we would be in a position where we'd go, okay, he had one move left. He either did a block or he did a save. If he did a save, then he's still totally defenseless. But the next dinosaur would obviously benefit from that save. 
he did a block, then our move could be wasted because he could block. So in this case here, we've got 23. We've got three moves available to us. Uh, 23 times 3 is um, 69. Technically that's not high enough, but remember I said the more moves you do, you get a bonus percentage. So there's a very good chance, probably a 100% chance actually, that if I do three moves, it will kill him. Now I could play safe and I could do one save, one block and one attack and just, just wheedle him down a little bit here, you know, wind him down. But in this case here, I'm just going to go for broke. I'm going to hit him with three. But remember now, I'm totally defenseless. I've used my three moves. I've got no blocks. I've got nothing. So he's going to come in with two moves. You see, he had two moves. He attacks with two. I'm dead because I had nothing to protect myself. But I've got two dinosaurs left. He doesn't. Now, my Triceratops has come in. And you'll notice the green number 38. I've got the advantage again because the Triceratops was had an advantage over Pterosaur. That's the reason I put it in that order. Now we have three moves because we'd already used our save. We didn't have any saves. And we could kill him easily. All right, because again, he had two moves before and he used both of his two moves. So he has no protection whatsoever. So in this case here, I wouldn't even hesitate it's the last dinosaur there's no point protecting yourself if you know you can kill him it's the last dinosaur the battle's over just go for it there's no point saving because you're not saving for nothing there's no point blocking because you're not blocking for anybody there's no one else to attack you so just kill him and be done with the battle and move on if he had a third dinosaur you would have to think about that because you'd have to think if i kill him i'm going to be defenseless on the next dinosaur so that was obviously a lot of talking and not much action in that, but it can be a little bit complicated and it will take a little bit of practice. But as I said, you need to pay attention. All right, this this obviously is, is a basic battle thing. You know, as I said, you need to get used to the system, but let's go through the motions again. So our first opponent is a herbivore. So if we look at our circle here, our best option here would be a carnivore. Fantastic, we have a level 11 carnivore. He's our strongest anyway. It puts it in order of strongest. I think it's strongest attack, because you'll see the health is actually better on Triceratops, but it's actually second in line. So we want to go with that. Then he's got an amphibian. So next would be, the option would be a pterosaur. And if we want to add a third in, what's our best option for third? Probably not a carnivore because that, again, is weak to an amphibian, but is strong to a herbivore. Pterosaur is weak to the herbivore, strong against the amphibian. So in a perfect world, you would probably go for... You'd probably go for either the herbivore or the, an amphibian as your third option in that case. We don't have, well, we do have a herbivore. We have Triceratops, so why not? Yeah, so my logic would be, let's go with the Triceratops. Uh, you could have gone with an amphibian, but we don't have any. So it's gonna cost us 400 coin. This is another reason we need to be making coin because these battles will cost money. And you'll get to the point where you have gotta pay $300,000 for a, a, a fight or anything. So again, in our theory here, we have 45 attack. It cannot kill him with one shot. Okay, he's got 10. He again can't kill us with two shots. Remember, he gets a bonus shot. Uh, the amphibian, we don't know. He could kill us or he might not. I don't know. Oh, you can. Okay, so you can click on his opponent and see his attack is 18. So if he swaps to his amphibian, he's going to waste one move and have one move. Which means even if he attacks, he can only hit us with 18. So he can't kill us. Either way, he can't kill us. 
So in that case here, I'm going to save. And I'm going to build up that move. He's going to silly go for two hits, right? They're not fighting very well in the early levels. That, it's really a stupid move to do because he's now hit me. Yes, he's hit me, but he's got nothing to protect him now. And I have three moves at 45. Now, he's totally defenseless. Here's the theory. Okay, now... In this case, we know he has no blocks. So I know I can tap on, and you can see the points down the bottom next to the attack adding up. I think the last number on there is potentially what it could be as a bonus number, but it doesn't work with one move. You don't get a bonus, so I'm not really sure how that works. But anyway, if we just look at the first number and base it on that, right? We've got 45, that matches our attack that was up the top corner. That's not going to kill him. So if I do it again, I get two. You can see that's 108. Right? That's well and truly going to kill him. Now, if we thought he had a block, we weren't sure and we thought he had a block. In that case there, I would assume he had a block and I would throw in another attack. Right? For safety. So I've got, I know two will kill him. Throw in one more because it's going to get blocked. So we'll get one blocked, two will get through, he's dead, right? That's what I would do. In this case here, we know he has no blocks. We can kill him with two, so I'm just going to do two. Now I have an option with my third move to either put it as a save or put it as a block. If I wanted to protect myself, once we kill him and the other dinosaur comes in, then I might decide that I want to do a block. Right, because I don't want my Majungasaurus to have any chance of dying. If I didn't do the block and I did a save, there's a chance that he will get killed by the next dinosaur. But the save will carry over to my next dinosaur. So it depends on whether you want to save your dinosaur or it's your last one and you're almost dead. Whatever it is. So let's say I want to protect him in this case, alright? So I'm going to do a block. So we kill him. Second guy comes in. He has an advantage over us, right? He is now 27. We're 15. We are weaker. We've got one block. And he didn't do anything. So that means he's either saved or blocked or a combination. And we don't know. So we have three moves. Now... As I said, we could, in theory, swap, and we will lose a move. So we have three moves, so let me just do it. We now have two moves available to us, but look at the scores now. We have a hit of 23. He has now dropped to nine, whereas he had an advantage before. Now he does not, and he has no one else to swap with. He potentially has, what does he have? Does he potentially, he potentially has two blocks. We only have two moves left. If he has two blocks, we can't kill him. So, and he can't kill us. So I might say, I'm gonna do two saves this time. I'm gonna leave myself entirely defenseless. And he did have two blocks. That's what popped up on that thing. He now has three. And he's hit us with one. So he has kept two moves. Again, those two moves could either be two blocks, two saves, or one block, one save. We don't know. There's no way for us to know. It's a guess. So we need to factor that in. So if we assume worst case, worst case scenario for us is that he's done two blocks. Because I took that risk and I did all the saves... We have six moves available to us now. He's the last one. Six, even with his two blocks. So if he's got two blocks, that's going to block out two. That's going to leave us with four hits. Four hits at 23 is... Oh, God, maths. Here we go. 92, something like that. 
well above his 72. Plus, there's going to be bonus percentages added on that. So, easily above 72. So, we will kill him if we go all six. And if he hasn't blocked, well, we've well and truly destroyed him. <laughs> so, in this case here, I'm going to go all six. He did do two blocks, so we get four hits in. Bang, he's destroyed. And we win. Easily. Right, we get some DNA for actually doing the battle and then we get our prize and our prize for this one was DNA so great we get a nice bonus DNA now we have the ability to move on now you'll see here the battle stages you will get to a spot where you can't progress because the next one up says reach park level 6 so we need to actually uh, upgrade our level to be able to continue some of these battle stages i like to do the battle stages as soon as i get them you can wait until the hoskin guy comes and asks you and you know you'll get the xp and that but the thing is he will ask you anyway so you'll still get the xp he will still come along eventually and say hey you need to do the next battle stage and it will just automatically be ticked because you've already done it So let's do one last battle, just for another example. So this one here, he's only got one dinosaur. This is interesting. But technically, it's a bit of a bit of a tank compared to us. If we have a look, he's got a health of 281. Our health is nowhere near 281. So in theory, he's going to take a few hits to get down. You know, we're talking about T-Rex, um, not T-Rex, Majungasaurus has a hit of 30. 30 is not going to do a great deal on 20, 281 health. All right, so we've got a bit of a grind. But he's made it a little bit easier for us because he's only put one in, right? And we have some options. So our first option here, he's a herbivore. So logic would say, let's put in Majungasaurus. Now, there's another option with this. If we take it back out, we could do it another way. And this, again, it comes down to your strategy, your theory of it, and how you want to work this out, right? And this is where battle tactics come in and stuff like that. You might decide that, well, hang on, my Triceratops has a lot more health. He's on equal playing ground as advantage type thing, but his attack's only 25. But I'm going to use him as a buffer and a sacrifice. And I'm going to do that, right? I'm going to show that as an example. Now, our next one is our uh, uh, pterosaurs. They're actually weak to him. So he would destroy them instantly because not only has he got 72 hit, which is actually greater than both of these health, so it'll kill them one shot. But it will even be worse than that when we get in the fight, because once he gets his advantage, it will be even greater. So they are going to be pretty useless to put in there. But I'm going to go with the carnivore second, and we'll just throw this in as a Hail Mary, just in case we need it. My theory here is what I'm going to do is Triceratops is not going to attack. He's going to save, and he's going to take a hit for the team. And he's going to build up some moves for Majungasaurus to come in and have all of these moves to hit Argentinosaurus with. And we're going to see if we can do this, all right? So we've rushed through this. I've done no leveling up of these dinosaurs, all right? We probably, in theory, should have been leveling up before we even tried to do this. But there's no reason we can't do this. So as I said, I'm sacrificing Triceratops. I'm not going to use him to try and win this fight. I'm going to use him to get a save. Now, in a perfect world, he'd have better health than this. This guy's going to get two moves. He's already got 72. So in theory, he can kill us first round. So we're only going to get probably one save. If he only does one attack, though, then it's different game. Now, he didn't do any. And 
That's perfect. So what he's done is he's either done two blocks, two saves, or one of each. Okay. Now, because I'm sacrificing Triceratops, his decision is perfect for me because now no, he's not... There was a risk my Triceratops was going to die first round and only give my Majungasaurus a benefit of one move. But now I can save three. And I'm going to give my Majungasaurus a benefit of three moves on top of what he already gets. And he still didn't attack. Now, the maximum you can save is four. We have six moves. So I'm going to put in four. I'm still sacrificing Triceratops. So... There's a good chance he's blocked, but we'll just gamble and throw two two attacks in. If we get one hit in, you know, it's a it's a bonus. Majungasaurus is gonna come in with maximum eight moves if we keep this four in our save. So I'm gonna throw two attacks. Now he did two blocks. Yeah, no loss, I didn't care. He's now got three moves. And we don't know what he's done. So he could have done three blocks. He could have done two blocks, one save. Two saves, one block, or three saves. So, again, I can save four. And he's really playing stupid. I think, I think they've deliberately made the battle like this because you're a new a new player easy so again i'm just going to go with four attacks and he only did two blocks all right so we're not killing him like we're taking damage out of him now he did do one save okay so he's now got five and he goes for two and he kills me so he's got three left we need to keep that in mind right he's got three left so he could have three blocks now we have eight moves now. So if we were to go 845s, oh my God, what are we talking about there? Uh, if it was 50, it'd be two 400, so it would easily kill him, but he's got a few blocks. So I said he could have three blocks. Let's see if we can work this out. So if I just click on it, the problem is you can't take back moves. So once you click on them, they're locked in. You, you, so I'm gambling already by doing this. So four moves it takes to kill him if he was unprotected. We know that he could potentially have three blocks. The beauty is we still have four moves left. Plus we get a massive bonus for doing our maximum of attack of eight. And we get a special graphic and everything. So, he's dead. We, we have killed him because our next four moves are not are definitely going to wipe out his blocks. So, we perfectly set up by using Triceratops. And we get the special graphic of the eight move and bang, he is down. So that was a different type of tactic. I could have gone in with Majungasaurus first and had the advantage and tried to battle him out. But in this case here, making the choice to throw in a sacrifice actually worked out. Uh, mostly because of his stupid play. He basically should have just killed my Triceratops and moved on and killed everybody else. But he didn't. For some reason, he just decided to be blocking all the time. Which was silly because we couldn't kill him. So why was he blocking? I don't get it. Anyway, we now get him. So we've got an Argentinosaurus. Yeah, great. So anyway, um, there's a lot more that you could learn from the battle system. But hopefully that's giving you some guidance if that's what you're looking for. Again, if there's, so if there's anything that you want to ask, feel free to ask. I'm happy to help if I can. I'm not an expert. Not, not claiming to be this is just my observations and my tactics with battling uh, there's lots of other tactics and lots of other people that have different ways of battling and their opinions of it but that's some of the thoughts that I go through anyway when I'm doing these battles 
Uh, it may seem easy now. Obviously, it gets a lot harder when you start getting up into a lot bigger areas and a lot more complicated. But the same concepts will still apply. So there's no problem there. And uh, uh, again, even if you don't want to ask me questions, if you think any of the things that I do are stupid or you have a better tactic, Dick, please let me know. I'm here to learn as well. I love to get other people's opinions on things that I can improve. Um, and that's what I want out of this. You know, I want to share what I learn and I want to learn from other people because it's fun, you know, and I'm having fun doing this and I want other people to have fun sharing this with me and sharing their thoughts with me. So if you have some better tactics and other things that I didn't think of or better ways to calculate some of this stuff or whatever it is, please feel free to let me know because I would love to uh, gain extra knowledge and improve my skills in this game or any game really, but. All right, well, hopefully that was enjoyable. Please remember if you like what you see here, subscribe to the channel, click the like button, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. Go and check out some of my other videos here that are linked on the side. And I thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.